Catholics, it's time to wake up. Did you know that Catholics are among the lowest and worst catechized of any Christian religion out there? Whereas Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses are often toward the top, Catholics are at the dead bottom for passing on the faith to their kids, for passing on the faith in the church, for Catholics growing up and retaining the faith. We are in an epidemic. We are in a catastrophic state. And it's not just the Catholic Church alone. It's Christianity in general. I've been to many Protestant churches. I mean, a lot of Protestant churches are dying, and they're all combining together so they still exist. And they, they complain about how many kids are not in church, and the future of their churches are in jeopardy. And it's not just the Catholic Church, but today we're talking about the Catholic problem of our society, of our culture, trying to destroy Christianity, trying to wipe out God. And what have we done for the last 50 years? We've let them. So this video is a call. I mean, imagine if you woke up in the middle of the night and you saw that your room was on fire and you go outside and you start to see other rooms all getting on fire and you panic for a second and realize that there's a whole building of sleeping people and they're all about to die because the fire is raging and they don't know. And in, a, in an extreme panic, you just yell at the the top of your lungs and say, wake up. And immediately you panic and you start bounding on every door as fast as you can, as quick as you can, pounding, 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 saying, wake up, wake up. That is the state we are in, in our church. Literally, Many people, most people in our culture are not walking toward God. They're walking away from God. They're not walking to church. They're walking away from church. They're not walking to heaven. They're walking away from heaven. And most of these people are believers, people who believe in God, and they're still walking away from heaven because they don't follow God. And they've walked away from church. And this is an epidemic from the top down. Bishops, priests, families, catechesis, it's all at Catholic schools. It all needs to be restructured. They say that four out of five kids will fall away before they even finish college. Even if you go to a Catholic school, the chances are you're going to fall away from your faith even before you graduate high school. This is a problem. Catholic schools and Catholic education used to be the premier education, training our kids to know their faith, to love their faith and to be good citizens in society. And now it's literally the opposite. And uh, I've had a lot of extensive experience in Catholic schools. And I even used to teach in a Catholic school. And these kids would say that religion was their least favorite class. They hated religion. And they would be there. And as soon as they got there, they were bored. This is the result of the faith not being lived at home many times. This is the result of the faith not being passed on to the kids, of not training the kids in apologetics. This is what we need, apologetics reconstruction. We need to give kids good answers. We need to train them and help them to understand why they believe what they believe. And we need to help them to have good answers to their good questions so they stop walking away in droves. It's huge. I mean, I told these kids in my, my high school when I was a teacher, I said, this is going to be your hardest class of this year. If you don't do well and if you don't try hard, you're going to fail and you will go to summer school, I told the senior before you go to college, because that's how important religion is in your life. And they were like, they started complaining immediately. They said, this has nothing to do with college. This will not get us into college. This is literally our least important class. And I said, really? Yes, I agree. It won't get you into college, but none of your college courses will get you to heaven or teach you what you need to know to get to heaven. So now which one's more important? And all of a sudden they were like, Oh no, we're in big trouble. And the lady down at the guidance counselor in the ministry office said that half of my class wanted to drop my class as soon as they left the building, as soon as they left my room. And she called me into her office and she said, Brian, half of the class wants to drop your class. And she said, good job. That means you're teaching them what they need to be taught. These kids were bored by religion. So I told them, I said, you ask any question you want. You challenge me. You fight me. Don't just believe what I say. Fight it. Make it your own. If you don't believe in God, fine. Tell me. But if you tell me that you believe in God and you don't, I'm going to fail you. If you just tell me what I want to hear, I'm going to fail you. And I challenged these kids. And these kids started arguing with me. And all of their objections started coming out. And we had great discussions. And 
And many people really came to deep faith in God because they got to air their objections. They got to have, ask their questions and they got to get good answers. This is what we need in the church. I mean, a complete reconstruction of catechesis, Catholic schools. We need evangelization. We need apologetics families, kids. It needs to happen. How can this happen? And this is not a condemnation to priests. It's a call to priests. But priests are not knowingly, inadvertently, leading generations of people to hell. And why? Because every single funeral I go to, almost without exception, the priests say, well, you, something like this, like, oh, well, you know what? We can pray for to Joe now because Joe is in heaven. And Joe can pray for us. So, or, oh, you know what? John passed away today and he, you know, lived a wonderful life. He was a good man. His family loved him. And John is in heaven now. So we can pray to John. This is, I don't even have a word strong enough of how detrimental this is. Many of these people do not live good lives. Many of these people did not even go to church. Many of these people did not live for God. We cannot canonize them. I can't say that strongly enough because what sign and what does that tell people in the, in the congregation? What they tell me all the time. I only need to be a good person to get to heaven. I don't need to pray and go to church. John didn't go to church and the priest said he was going to heaven. Joseph or George, well, they, you know, smoke and they drank like a sailor and they cursed like a sailor and they weren't really good people, but you know what? They're in heaven now. So that's a good place. What is the, what does it communicate to us? That we don't need any, to do anything to get to heaven. We just need to be a good person and exist. We have a whole, basically a whole culture existing, thinking that they're going to get to heaven. One poll asked uh, random people, do you think you're going to go to heaven when they when you die? And the people, about 94% of people said, yes, I think I'm going to get to heaven when I die. And they asked the same people, do you pray? And how often do you pray? And the majority of those people said that they didn't pray or they didn't pray that often at all. So all these people think they're just going to get to heaven by existing. It doesn't work that way. Jesus said the way is narrow and uphill and difficult. And the road to destruction and hell is wide and easy. And many people are walking the easy path to hell today comfortably. And we're saying they're in heaven when they're not living for heaven. Yes, I agree we should preach the love of Christ. I agree we should preach the love of God. But the love of God in John 14, 15 and many other verses says that if you love me, you will follow the commandments. Following the commandments is loving God. You can't love God if you don't obey his commandments and you don't go to mass and you don't receive the Eucharist and you're living immoral lifestyles that everybody says is okay. No, we need to preach the faith and stop baptizing and stop canonizing everybody at every funeral saying that they're in heaven and we can pray to them now. Please, for the love of all that's good priests, I beg you never to do that again because you're inadvertently telling everybody that they don't need to do anything to get to heaven. And we're just saying, oh, he was nice. His family loved him and now he's in heaven. And that's what everybody thinks anyways, which is why so many people don't go to church. We need to call people on not only with the love of Christ, but also what that means. Jesus said in the gospels that if you want to follow him, um, it's kind of like an army leader. He said, you want to make sure that you, you have enough troops to conquer the other side first before you get started. Or if you're building a tall skyscraper, you want to make sure you have enough resources to finish. Because if you don't, you're not going to succeed and you're going to fail and people are all going to make fun of you. Basically, living Christianity is hard. You may, got to make sure that you're all in. So I want to call on bishops and priests to speak the truth, preach the truth. We need you to. We're desperate for you to. The Catholic Church has historically taught and preached the truth for all of history. And you've taught us what we need to know to get to heaven. That's your job. That's your vocation. Too many priests want to just tell jokes in the as in the homilies and just want to make friends with the people, which is fine. I get that, but not in the homily. We need to be challenged. We need to be told what we're doing wrong, how we can do right, where we're going astray, and how we can follow God better. That's what all the saints did. The saints challenged us to live for God. And every time I read one of the saints, I feel like they're slapping 
slapping me across the face with that book, but it's making me holier. It's, it's giving me a reality check that I need to do better. I need to follow God more faithfully. I need to be less lukewarm and different things like that. So we're not helping anybody by just watering down the faith, by just giving a homily where we summarize the points of what was going on. No, we need to be challenged. We need to be called on. We need to be taught how to pray and how to have a close communion and intimacy with Jesus. We need our deepest, darkest questions answered. And if that means you need to have Bible studies and adult formation and catechesis at your churches and parishes, then you should. And in fact, that should be a non-negotiable. We should all have these things at our parishes. What do you have at your parish for people after confirmation? The answer is many times nothing. And this is a call to lay people to to start something. If you have something at your parish, great. If you don't, start a Bible study. Start faith formation. Start RCIA. Anything that's not there already, it's your job to start it. God might be calling you. We are the body of Christ, and we can't say the church is dead if we're not willing to do anything about it. Maybe we're dead, and we need to rise up, and we need to start that fire, and we need to spread that fire. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is an all-consuming fire, and we need that fire in our hearts and to let it spread to everyone around us. And that comes from having a really deep, loving relationship with Jesus Christ and knowing the God of the universe, letting him change your life, not living lukewarm lives, not just getting by, not just doing the bottom of the barrel uh, of what you're supposed to do, not even just doing the minimum amount, not just going through the mass, but really making it the best it can absolutely be and giving God the most amount possible. And this is a challenge in our day and age when we're super, super busy. But parents, you have a responsibility to train your kids in the faith. You promised God, maybe you didn't realize this, but you promised God. God, that you would raise your kids Catholic, you would have them know their prayers, know the commandments, you would teach them their faith, and have a relationship with Jesus. Then you literally have failed with God. You, many parents don't even take their kids to church. They might drop them off at CCD, or if they have to go to Mass, they'll drop them off and leave themselves. Many parents are teaching their kids to sin, to think that religion is not important. Many parents are teaching them to prioritize religion at the bottom, under the college education, under the sports and hobbies, under all of that which is absolutely nonsensically not important compared to our eternal souls going to heaven or hell for all eternity. And many parents are driving the car to hell. They're leading their families to hell, and they're behind the wheels because they are teaching their kids that they can watch any movie they want. They can listen to any music they want. They're listening to ACDC and Ozzy Osbourne and watching all of these raunchy shows online. And Jesus said, if you leave, lead even one of these children astray, it is better for you to tie a huge rock, a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into the ocean rather than you have ever been born and face God's judgment for leading these little ones astray. And that goes for you priests. That goes for you bishops. That goes for any corruption in the church. You will answer to God. And Padre Pio and other saints say people who have one of the highest authorities in the church and they are corrupt and they do evil things, they are going to occupy the lowest, hottest, most horrific places of hell right next to the dragon's own tail. Please, this life is not a joke. And this this video is not a joke. It's a call. It's not a condemnation to anyone. It's a call. It's a call to reject sin. It's a call to reject the devil. It's a call to hate hell, to run away from it, to fly away from it, to get away from it as fast as possible. It's a call to turn your life around now, to get a prayer life now, to go to confession now. Do you really think you're going to get to heaven when you don't ever confess your sins? It's not going to happen. We need to confess our sins and repent and get right with our God. We need to have a relationship with our God. We don't just get to heaven by accident. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people, and we need Jesus. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. He said, without me, you can do nothing in John chapter 15. But in Philippians, it says that with Christ, we can do all 
things. With Christ, we can do all things. All things. So it doesn't matter how far you've walked away. It doesn't matter if you shirked all of your duties and you should have raised your kids in the faith and now they're all a bunch of atheists and they don't practice anything and you realize that you totally failed at life. Guess what? Jesus is the God of second chances. Jesus can let you start over again. Maybe you've been a priest who has been scared to preach the truth. Maybe you've been a priest who you really want to live the faith, but you're afraid of what your bishop might say. You're afraid of what other people might say. You're not willing to go to the, the the way of martyrdom like the saints did. Maybe you realize that you haven't done it right and you want to. Jesus is the God of second chances. The Holy Spirit is the power and the fire of the universe. He can wake us up. Our church has need of being woken up. I mean, we are basically dead in many ways and we need to wake up. We need the fire. And that goes for bishops. That goes for priests. That goes for the Pope. That goes for lay people. There's no one, there's no exception for this rule. We all need a relationship with Jesus Christ and that a good relationship. We need to do spiritual reading, Bible reading. What are we prioritizing? Netflix? Is that why we don't have time to pray at night? Are we prioritizing just binge watching movies and shows or video games or our jobs or our career? Or are we a gym rat? We spend all day in the gym and we don't have time to pray? None of these things are necessarily bad, but if they take uh, all the time that we have and we don't have a good prayer life with God, then we've broken the first and foremost of his commandments, which is put him first. We need to put him first. That is the first commandment. Have no false gods. Money can be made a God if you work all the time. You skip mass on Sundays and you don't have time to work. That's number commandment number one and three. And, and that goes for anything else. If you sleep in on Sundays, you don't go to mass. That's commandments number one and three. And I want to challenge you, if you haven't confessed your sins in a long time, to please consider going to confession. And if you if you need help with that, if you're scared about that, and I would understand that, we have videos that can help you on that, which I'll try to link below or at the end. But we have videos that will help you to know the love of God, trust in his mercy, trust in his goodness, and trust in the fact that he wants to forgive you. He wants to bring you to heaven. He wants to get us there. But our church is in dire straits. Honestly, that's why I started Catholic Truth, because so much of our church church is confused. So much of our church is not pointing the way. They're not preaching the truth. They're not doing what they should. So we need a clear voice in this age of confusion. We need a clear light in this age of darkness. And that's what Catholic truth is for, to preach the truth. Because our, how many times can we just let people drive to hell and not tell them, oh, well, it's not nice to talk about hell. No, it's not nice, but it's even worse to let them go there and not even warn them. It's, not even, it's worse to not even knock on those people's doors and tell them there's a fire in the building, that there's something going on, that there's madness going on, that there's people insidiously laughing in the building because they're the ones who lit the fire and they're running out. They're the ones who claim to love us and they're the ones who are killing us. And that's many people in our church too. They claim to love us and then they poison us with the fruit of heresy, with the fruit of apostasy, with the fruit of perdition, with the fruit of legalism, with the fruit of secularism, with the fruit of modernism, liberalism, and all the rest of it. They're poisoning us while they say they love us. They're saying, hey, I love you. Eat this food. And then they're trying to kill us with garbage that's not from Jesus Christ, with garbage that's not from our God. We need to hold fast. We need to stand up. Catholics, if you're still listening to me, you need to be the soldiers. You need to be the ones who stand up. You need to be the ones who take the sword in hand with me. Join me, please. This doesn't come through fighting or getting angry. This doesn't come from demonizing or calling people stupid idiots or any you know, pontificating all the time. We rarely make these kind of videos, but sometimes we we need a call. We need a shock. We need someone to call us on like a good coach. A good sword and a good fight is a good prayer life. It's humility. It's love. It's purity. It's patience. These are the fruits of the Spirit. And this is what Jesus Christ calls us to. This is what the saints had. The saints did not sit around whining like a bunch of babies all day long. No, they prayed harder. They fasted more. They prayed the rosary. They read the scriptures. They mortified themselves. And they tried to reform the church from within. And the more they encountered people who resisted them and resisted their message, the more they prayed 
the more they tried to grow in holiness and the deeper the relationship they tried to have with God. So please, please pray for me that I can do this. Please pray for me that I can become holier, that I can pray more, that I can be the Christian that God wants me to be and not a fake and not a phony, but someone who can change the world in some way. And I'm going to pray that you guys can change the world in some way, no matter where you are on your journey, no matter what you're struggling with, whether you've failed up to this point or whether you've succeeded and just need to do more, wherever you are, I'm going to pray for you because we're all on a journey. Have hope. If you're, have, if you're struggling with your failures, we have videos on the love of God. If you're struggling and you want to know more about this topic, check out our video, Catholic Crisis, where we give a lot more um, information and where we talk more about the problems in the church, where they came from, why they're here, and how they can be overcome. Make no mistake, Jesus is the only solution to the problems in this church. And the reason why we have so many is because over the last 50 years in this church, we have walked away from Jesus. We indulged, too many Catholics indulged in the sexual revolution, the anarchy, the New Age movement, scientism, and men, liberalism, modernism, and many other things that have eroded and destroyed the foundation of the church. It's because priests and nuns who are going to be accountable on Judgment Day, make no mistake, they have walked away from Christ and they have substituted false, heretical views in place of what Jesus actually taught us. Jesus Christ and getting back to Christ is the only solution to our problems. Check out Mother Angelica's story and all the bishops she had to fight and all the priests she had to face just for preaching the truth. She has a wonderful autobi a wonderful biography uh, by uh, Arroyo, and I would highly recommend it. It's I believe it's called A Nun and her nerve or something like that and a network of miracles or something like that's a fantastic read so if you need some inspiration <laughs> after this definitely check out that book thank you for staying tuned with me thank you for listening to the warning thank you for listening to the message now please help share it with others in your own lives and also online with this video please help share it with others. And if you can, please consider supporting our ministry so we can keep doing this dire work that God has called us to do. Keep saving souls, to keep changing lives, and to keep bringing people home to the fullness of the truth. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. Hi everyone, my name is Kate. I'm the video editor here at Catholic Truth, and I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for taking some time to watch our videos and learn more about your faith. You guys really make this channel possible, and we truly appreciate you being here. So thanks again, and God bless.